Hello guys, it's me, Jocasta Lester. In this video, I want to talk to you about the um, the series of dreams that have basically contributed to what I feel is anxiety about what's going on with my actual son, okay? Um, so I feel like there are two divergent entities that they say are Tobias, okay? I feel like one of them is a um, is the one that's more like my younger baby, who, um, you know, at the time he spoke, he was slow to speak. Um, and really he was just a sweet, gentle child. Um, there's one that seems like him. Then there's the other. Um, and also within that particular, um, function of what is the existence that represents Tobias, <laughs> um, savvy, smart, kind, um, a different type of person that his new persona is one that's helpful. But in other words, it's like I've heard a person grow up and potential that said, this is a sweetie pie. This is who my child is. And this is who he's going to be. <laughs> then I've heard this other thing in my spirit that sounds like him some, but sounds like him under the influence of world influencers. And like he's been like a, like a tragedy and a tra just a horror. Um, not to say that he's that, but to say that he's been victimized and left in that way. Okay. So two, it says, okay, he's going to be this one day. He's a sweetie pie, you know, and the other that sounds like he's been abused and like, he's been going through a lot within that sweet persona identity. Cause I say the other one, but then there's another one <laughs> that seems to be completely detached, doesn't know what's going on, doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> and <laughs> it seems like a, um, the one that's in Georgia, okay? So I say all of that to say this, okay? I know I said a lot of stuff and it was all over the place. Basically, it seems like it's a real Tobias and a fake Tobias. <laughs> and one is the one that's in Georgia that may seemingly be the fake one, but seems like the real one. One may be this this other situation that sounds like hurt and pain and, and potential, all right? Hurt, pain, potential, ruin, potential, and what may or not or may not be a reality that's untold and hidden, okay? So the point of that whole intro is to say this, that because all of this weird stuff has been going on, I was led to believe that identity theft... <laughs> Like a lot of these things that were given as buzzwords and terms, I'm like, what if they're real? <laughs> what if they're actual occurrences that can take place and we didn't understand that there are people that try to assume other people's names, other people's lives, and in the worst cases, other people's places in life, okay? While they're living. <laughs> so I say all of that to say this. It sounds like a person that has been displaced from their home and replaced in their space, okay? That's the worst case scenario. Under good conditions, it's just all spiritual michigas and it wasn't real. Under the worst case, it's like someone got away with a very heinous act and everyone's kind of trying to smooth it over and act like it never happened, okay? So, my nightmares, I pray, I ask God what's going on with my son. And each time that I've had these nightmares, um, I had stopped dream. I had stopped dreaming for a period. Um, by the way, this uh, the cell phone camera. Um, I'm using a different cell phone, but I'm watching the time, <laughs> and it's going really fast. So, this is somehow a four minute talk according to this camera. But I know I haven't said much. <laughs> so, anyway, so <laughs> will there be insertions? I don't know. Are there other voices present currently? So with that said, um, I don't want to talk with anyone in any of my videos, all of my videos. If there is not a completely distinct and uniquely identified person somewhere else, I wasn't talking with anyone and they weren't my friends. I did not like whatever tried to come into the video. And that's that you got it. <laughs> We're not friends, nor have we ever been friends. I don't know these people. It was just me and you talking. And potentially, if something got edited, I didn't do it. <laughs> um, so with that said, 
um, I had a series of nightmares. And the nightmares usually happen after I've sought the Lord for something. And I've asked him what was going on with my child while seeking him. It's usually after a period of fasting. Um, it's usually after coming to a realization that something very horrible may have happened. The whole world went silent. Everything went a little weird. And I started hearing crying in my spirit. So, and in sequence, in some cases, is how these nightmares occur. <laughs> um, my understanding is something may have happened in secret and they covered it up by putting a falsehood in place, potentially. <laughs> so I saw my son in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, at around the age of six. <laughs> And in my nightmare, he was told to turn to the left, to turn to the right, and to be still. There was no voice, but it's as though he was given that instruction because that's exactly what he did in the nightmare. He was in the nude, and it was like someone had told him, turn left, turn right, stop, okay? Now, when I was in Rocky Mount, the reality, now that was in a nightmare, here in Virginia recently. The reality of the situation is, is thus. I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw him getting up in the nude. He started what looked like jogging in place. Okay. My son, I had never seen him do a pee pee dance while awake. So it was as though he was doing a pee pee dance. And I'm like, why are you pee pee dancing? You don't pee pee dance. And we were at the Rocky Mount Police Department. So there's the nightmare and then hit the reality. I took him to the Rocky Mount Police Department. And while I was there, um, I was talking to the police officer and he was a fresh-eyed, um, newer officer um, or not new to the job, but just he just looked like a person that was clean. <laughs> um, while we were there, my son had this look like, you know what I'm doing, okay? And he started to do the same pee-pee dance as I was telling the police about my son being um, potentially abused by my ex-husband. Okay. So that's incident one. Nightmare recently. Turn to the left, turn to the right, stop. Okay. Real image, real incident where I woke up and saw my child up pee-pee dancing and I took him to the restroom. Now, what I understand is this, in hindsight, because around this period of time, I was freaking out, locking all the doors. It was as though my ex-husband were playing a gaslighting game with my, my son and I, okay? And I'm telling you, this video is very long and I haven't said much. It's eight minutes now. <laughs> so with that said, I'm trying not to make it a 30 minute video, but it might be just that. I'm saying to you that there are several nightmares that work in tandem with reality after the fact. I'm seeing stuff after the fact, but during the time that I was there, I woke up to see something that looked similar to what I saw after the fact. And it's almost as though the, the, the blanks are being filled in about what I saw. Okay. So that was one. And over here in this area, they play, I now know that it's uh, the Reviel. <laughs> and I know it's something that, it seems to me like something that they use to awaken um, soldiers in boot camp and such. <laughs> um, so that that nightmare that I had, I'm like, was my child going through this while I was sleeping? Like, what in the world? Because <laughs> I had gotten so freaked out that I started locking everything. So that when he woke up in the night, I'm like, why are you naked? I've never seen you awake like this. Why did you wake up? Because I took him to sleep in my bedroom. He used to sleep in his bedroom by himself. Okay. There's an attic access that I now understand after the fact that was in his bedroom. Okay. And I didn't understand why that was there. <laughs> but in our bedroom was our bed. And I had brought in what was the arrow mattress from our third bedroom. And we had another actual bed in our third bedroom, but I brought in an arrow mattress and I brought it into our master bedroom and I put it 
where our bed used to be. I moved our bed across the room somewhere else and left all the other furniture intact so that he had his own queen bed to sleep in and I had my own queen bed to sleep in. And I locked up everything because I was freaking out. <laughs> but I woke up and he did this strange thing that I had never seen him do. And I'm like, but he didn't sleep in the room with me either. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, is this something that you woke up to in your bedroom? I don't know now. So while in um, another nightmare that I had, um, my son was in a room that I didn't understand. He was just sitting on the bed. And whatever it was, while he was sitting on the bed, he was sitting there. And this was a strange bed to me. I had never seen this bed a day in my life. Ever. <laughs> except in my nightmares. And whatever it was that was in his nightmare, it charged him. He was sitting there in the bed and they were so angry that they went running toward him. He was sitting on the bed. He, he wasn't doing anything. He was sitting down and they attacked him in my nightmare. Okay. So I'm like, okay, Another incident, the thing that comes to mind to me, when my son was in foster care after this whole weird thing where I got run out of my house and chased down by my ex-husband, I know that I saw his car at least as far as Nashville, Tennessee. So this was the period that my son was in foster care was in Memphis. Okay. But he was sitting on the bed. He was sitting on the bed. And when he told me, um, that's number one in that nightmare. He was sitting on the bed. Um, I called while I was in Memphis. Um, and after I had come back to come get him, um, I wasn't prepared to get him, but I came back. He talked to me on the phone about neurological, um, conversation. And in hindsight, I'm like, did he go to a neurologist or, he said, I learned this because I asked him about what he learned in school. So, um, I'm under the impression or under the understanding that something may not have been so right where he was. Okay. And back in 2012, while I was in court, uh, when they brought me back there, he drew me some hearts and he said, I love you, mom on the hearts um, my mom had given him a, a notepad to draw on but another thing was this his um we were in court and while we were waiting to go into the courtroom I was there with um the professional that had brought me there and he said to me in front of this person they climb into bed with the children. Okay. He was telling me about them climbing into bed with the children. Okay. He saw them get into bed with the children. Okay. And shortly thereafter, he was moved to another foster care. Okay. So they run you from your house. They run you to court. They run you to crazy houses. They run you all over the place to make it difficult for you to say what you have to say. But at the end of the day, it's stuff that's put outside of your control. You try to keep it within your control and they try to keep it out of your control and tell you that they're helping you somehow by making it worse than it ever had to be. Okay. And they want to be in charge and caring for yours, but you want to keep your own and you try to, <laughs> they keep running people this way and that way. Okay. So now while my son, I'm understanding in hindsight, I'm looking at what I saw in my nightmare here, like in this state in Virginia. And I'm like, I think I may have seen what happened in foster care. And it was on that same phone call where I was on this phone call with my baby in Memphis. And um, the lady, she gets angry with my son. Because he says to her, I don't want to be a sicko. 
And I know that I taught him that a sicko is a person that hurts children. Okay. And I taught him this. And he said this to me on the phone while talking to this lady. And I understood it to mean, okay, she's a sicko. Okay. So that if I were to get angry, he's there in her care. I, you know, I'm kept away from him by the courts because the courts were telling me that I didn't have a right to see my child. Okay. So I have all this stuff that, you know, I've been nightmaring about. <laughs> and I've been treated as though I've been the one wanting to be so bad. I ain't do this. <laughs> okay. And they all inserted themselves in the way between me and my child. But anyway, so I had nightmare after nightmare. <laughs> um, I had a nightmare where I was in Virginia <laughs> sleeping. Me, this is where this nightmare took place. And um, I haven't been, really been good about giving you the placement of me as it pertains to the nightmares. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, I was in, this is the one that's distinct about Beyonce. Okay. So I'm in this nightmare. Um, and I saw Beyonce on the back seat of what was a limo, a car. I don't know what type of vehicle it was. But. I saw her on the back seat and it was as though I didn't see the person that was on the floor, but I was on the floor and I was looking up at Beyonce in this back seat. I didn't understand why I was there, <laughs> but in the nightmare, the heart of the person was hardened. Like I felt the heart get hard <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that was a weird nightmare. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to make of that because I'm like, that's a that's a completely strange incident. Another nightmare I had, I was in what was apparently a project home. It was a hood. It was a ghetto. And it was this strange animal brought to the front door. This animal looked like a, um, like a half breed between what was a, a panther and a tiger. Like it was a strange looking animal. Um, it nibbled on my hand. I put my hand out the door and it nibbled on my hand. I didn't look at the shape or the size of my hand or like I was, I was a child or an adult putting my hand out, but I remember it nibbled on my hand. Um, in this nightmare and I was in a project home and this big animal, this strange animal, this lab produced looking animal <laughs> was brought to the door. <laughs> Um, in at what what looked like the projects, okay, it looked like I was in a ghetto, in a project house, at the front door with this animal being brought to the door, okay. An exotic, lab produced animal, <laughs> okay. It looked like an engineered animal. <laughs> um, that was in that nightmare. In another nightmare, I um I was in the in several of these dream these nightmares. I'm in the first person position, and um I saw what was my ex husband lying down on what was a, a lower to the floor bed. It wasn't so high a bed <laughs> like this bed that I'm on. I'm in a room that's like a shorter room. It's not like a trailer. It's like a regular home, you know, but it's not like the high ceiling type of home, you feel me? <laughs> but I'm sitting on this bed and it's higher than the window seal. <laughs> it wasn't a bed like that. Okay. It was a bed that like sat on like one of those regular um, bed frames, the rails that's low to the floor where you can't really get under the bed if you try to hide under it. <laughs> um, and this bed, it was a it was a shorter bed. The reason why I'm emphasizing this is a shorter bed, because he was asking me to get into bed with him. And it was a shorter bed. And I was there standing just over him, okay, on this shorter bed in this nightmare. So I'm in this nightmare looking down into bed that my ex-husband is in naked, beckoning me to get into. So that's another nightmare. 
In another nightmare, I saw what was my ex-husband on the back of what was my son in the nude. Okay. Um, what else? There's trips to Georgia. I've been locked in jail, all types of stuff. Meanwhile, <laughs> and, um, there's trips down to Georgia and cops that seem so hush hush. And I asked to see my son and then they run in and then they run out and it's like, Oh, can't come to this address. Okay. He's okay. All right. Welfare checks. He's okay. All right. All right. So meanwhile, Lil Nas X and all of them, they're making videos about jail and, you know, being nude in the shower and all types of weird stuff over there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, um, I had another nightmare in this nightmare. I was in this bedroom or somewhere. Anyway, my real self was in this bedroom. Okay. Nightmare. <laughs> um, the nightmare, I don't know where it was, but I know it was a red room, bright red. Okay. But in this room, I saw what was a person with no face and cigarette burns in the place of a face. And I was listening to the song, How Do You Want It by Tupac. Okay. How does it feel? Okay. The person, the figure that I saw in this nightmare was age consistent with my son. Okay. I believe that this nightmare, I want to say it may have been either earlier this year or sometime last year. I'm having trouble kind of remembering right now. But I started working for South Coast um, in August, I want to say. So, um, age consistent. So that age consistent with my son's age now. The size of that person looked like it could have been um, like the sizing of that person was about the same sizing of what my son potentially could have been at age 15 or so. Okay. So I've been looking in these nightmares now, these nightmares. I was sitting on what was the Laboon, the USS Laboon. <laughs> and I had a nightmare about where I was sitting the night before. And I went on to sit there and I looked down the hall <laughs> and I saw what was these hoses um, that were on the ship. I'm like, what in the world? Meanwhile, all this is going on. I meet somebody named Facinda, which I don't know why his name is Facinda. <laughs> um, and why he met me face to face. Um, he gave me a gospel song. Um, I don't know why there was a person that was there on the ship who kind of had like a, you know, his cousins in a motorcycle gang and I had since been down to Georgia and in Georgia, um, on the way in, I heard a motorcyclist, um, as he was riding by saying, go turn back. He said, turn back. <laughs> okay. He was leaving. What was the area, um, that I was pulling off of the interstate on to into Augusta. Okay. So, um, what else? And one of the guys who said he had a family member in a motorcycle gang that was talking to me about some stuff. <laughs> he was like, like the weird looks with the eyes that look like, oh God, like those types of eyes <laughs> as he was talking to me. <laughs> and um, he himself, you know, he looked like he was a motorcycle gang member. <laughs> but, um, and he had like bruising on his hands and things. Today I've heard that someone wanted to beat up my son. <laughs> And it was not recognizable. Um, this Beyonce spirit problem has been coming to me. <laughs> um, 
all these spirits that run after me. Oh, I had another nightmare. In this nightmare, I was on, it was some street that I was on. I don't know if I was driving or walking. I don't really know. <laughs> but whatever it was, it went like I was getting pushed back. And as I was getting pushed back, I got picked up and swung around and thrown into what was a ditch with water in it. And as I looked up in the water, I saw what were flowers. Okay. So. Um, while I was sitting in another dream in a nightmare. It was another nightmare about somewhere that I went on to see later. And I was trying to figure out where it was. Okay. So I was on a USS Laboon and I was sitting on the, um, the flight deck. Okay. And on the flight deck, while I was sitting there, I was looking out on what was the, uh, the pier on this pier is this person, this weird man, this weird looking man. He asked me, who am I waiting for while I was on the ship? I'm like, huh? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a fire watch. We wait. <laughs> this this is a typical thing that happens when fire watches are around. I didn't say that, but I'm like, that's what I'm kind of feeling as I'm asked <laughs> as I'm asked this. Okay. So he's walking through the ship. He's supposedly the project manager, but I don't know what project and who he manages for. He just showed up <laughs> seemingly. Okay. I don't know for sure who he worked for, but he just seemed like this person that was odd in there. Okay. That's the way that they behaved around him. <laughs> Um, but long story short, in this nightmare, I saw him yelling and, and moving toward me in an angry way. And I moved along like I was scared, like I was walking off. I was scared. Okay. So if I didn't know any better, I would say all of my nightmares. Oh, I had another nightmare where... I was on what apparently was the USS 